Thanks very much. Hi, uh, this is David Davis from Train Signal, and I'm excited today to be talking about VMware vSphere 5.1 new features. So I really appreciate everyone being on the webinar today. There's so many new features in vSphere 5.1, we've got a lot to talk about. So with that, let's get started. Before we move too far into it, for those of you who don't know me, uh, let me briefly give you just a little bit of background about myself, where I come from. I've been in IT a long time. I worked at a medium-sized company where we had about 2,500 users. I was uh, initially a, a server admin, a network admin, Unix admin, worked my way up to an IT manager, and uh, it was there that I got my first initial taste of virtualization, and we had a very successful server consolidation. So um, one of the things that I learned from that was really you know, the power of vSphere, what vSphere can do and um, how, you know, how much it can really change the life of, a, of the daily admin. So uh, we, uh, from there I started writing about uh, first network sitting and then later I wrote about virtualization and through that I was invited by TrainSignal to create some video training courses and at this point I've created, I don't know, over 15 different training courses for TrainSignal uh, including even those on Hyper-V, um, Workstation for the IT Admin is the course I'm working on now and is about to come out. And we just recently released vSphere 5.1 new features, which is, of course, what this, this webinar is about. So in my spare time, I've spoken at a number of different conferences, including VMworld, and I write for Virtualization Review Magazine and numerous other websites. Uh, I've been honored to uh, received the VMware vExpert Award for the past few years and uh, also obtained a number of different certifications. So that's a little bit of background about me and um, let's get started by talking or let's get started now and talk about vSphere 5.1, what we came here to learn about. Before I do that, a quick little warning here. In this webinar there's a lot of slides and this is not what my this is not what my video training course is about at all. My video training courses might have three slides, maybe five slides, but then the other, you know, 80% of the time in the video training course, I spend talking about uh, and, and showing you hands-on how to implement, let's say, vSphere 5.1, how to install ESXi, how to configure storage vMotion, and, and, you know, features like that. So uh, in this webinar, you'll see a lot of slides. I'll try to do a little bit of hands-on here in my lab, uh, but the video training course is very different. In fact, uh, you can go and you can try it, you know, at no cost over at trainsignal.com and, and see, see it for yourself. So the first new feature in vSphere 5.1 I want to talk about is the web client. Now the web client isn't completely new, but it looks totally different. It's, I would say, 100% more functional than it's ever been before. And um, it's really, you know, the client of the future. This is what it looks like. And in fact, we'll go over to the lab here in just a second, and I'll show you what it looks like in my lab. But as you can see, it's it's beautiful, really, compared to the previous version. If you use the previous version, and not only is it prettier, but it's also much more useful than the traditional Windows-based vSphere client. It's operating system independent, so you don't have to install an application that runs just in Windows, uh, whatever operating system you're using, as long as you have a web browser, and as long as you can install Adobe Flash, you can use the new vSphere 5.1 web client. So completely browser-based, uh, it's got a tabbed interface, it has what they call tagging, so you can tag objects, you can sort and report on those tags. Uh, one of the other new features is called work in progress, or you could also call it pause and resume. So with pause and resume, let's say you're in the middle of a task, let's say you're configuring, um, I don't know, a, a new data store, and someone walks in and says, hey, I need you to restart a virtual machine, you can put that task into a pause mode and or a work in progress queue. You can save it, you can go do what you need to do, and then come back to that task. So a lot of new features, and VMware has said that this is going to be the only administrative client for VMware vSphere in the next version, or the next major release, I believe they said, of vSphere. So if you haven't started learning about it now, it's a great time to learn about it because that Windows-based uh, vSphere client may go away you know, sooner rather than later. 
So a little bit about actually using the client. You know, there's really two different options to be able to access the client. The first one is if you use the vCenter server appliance, which they call VCSA, it comes with the vSphere web client server piece already installed. So think of it like a web client and server application. You need to have the server side so that you can access it with your web browser. If you install the traditional Windows-based vCenter server, you're going to also have to install what they call the vSphere web client server piece. Kind of a weird term, the web client server, but that's a separate installation. It's also, I mean, it's already on the vCenter server uh, DVD media or the ISO uh, installation media. It's already there. It's easy to install, but it's just something additional that you need to do, something additional you need to, you know, take into account. So again, if you use the vCenter server appliance, you've already got the web client server piece. Now something else I also want to point out before I go over to the lab and show you the vSphere web client is that many of those plugins or really all of the plugins that you used back in the Windows based vSphere client world, those are not going to be compatible with the web based vSphere client. So if you have plugins, let's say for a backup application or something like that, there's also a number of free vSphere client plugins you might have downloaded over time. You know, one of the simple ones that I used is from the guys over at uh, extrovert.com where you right click on a virtual machine and you can connect to it immediately via RDP. Those types of plugins aren't going to be compatible with the new web based client. So those vendors are going to have to rewrite their plugins to make them compatible with the web-based client. So let's see, before we jump into the next topic here on VM Hardware version 9, if I tab over to my vSphere web client interface, hopefully you can see that. Uh, this is my small lab environment where I create, you know, train signal video training courses around vSphere. And in fact, I just installed this uh, web, uh, web server or this VCSA, vCenter server appliance this morning. So there might be some kinks still in here. Uh, I had previously removed the virtual appliance and installed the Windows based version uh, for some reason. Anyway, uh, here I, as you can see I've got two different hosts and this is the traditional you know, hosts and virtual machines view or hosts and clusters view that you would have over in the Windows based vSphere client and notice the tabs across the top. I've got hosts and clusters, I've got virtual machines and templates. I can expand that out there's my virtual machines and if I have any templates then I've got storage so here's my storage view you can see I've got two local data stores and then a shared iSCSI SAN and then I've got my networking view here so there's my own virtual machine my only virtual machine network then I can go up to the home screen and you can see here's the you know inventory section, monitoring, administration. So it looks very similar, on this screen at least, to the Windows-based vSphere client, but there are some differences. Over here on the right, you can see these push pins that slide in and out. Those can collapse and then they can come back out. And I've also got my recent task over here, my work in progress. I've got alarms. So the view is slightly different. And you can take advantage of those work in progress features and you'll see additional plugins in here. For example, if you use uh, vCenter uh, Operations Manager Foundation Edition, which is now included with vSphere 5.1, uh, you'll actually see the uh, uh, section in here for vCenter Operations Manager, and you'll also see a section in here for uh, the new VMware Backup application, vSphere Data Protection, which I'll talk about as well. So more and more, the different applications are being integrated here into vSphere, into the vSphere web client. So I won't spend a lot of time. Uh, this isn't you know, a full training course, but I did want to at least show you some sort of hands-on. And I think you know, this is probably the, the most visually different uh, thing that you'll see that's changed when you start using vSphere 5.1 and you know, the new web-based client. Now, something else that's new in vSphere 5.1 is 
Virtual Machine Hardware version 9. So, you know, with every new version of vSphere, typically they've released a new Virtual Machine Hardware. And with Virtual Machine Hardware version 9, the virtual machines can be twice as large as they have ever been with previous releases. They support up to 64-way SMP, so multi, symmetric multiprocessing. And there's a couple of features in Virtual Machine Hardware version 9 related to VMware View, such as the reclamation of virtual storage feature and the 3D graphic support with a virtual GPU or graphic processing unit. It can go all the way up to one terabyte of RAM. So up to 64 virtual CPUs or and, and up to one terabyte of virtual RAM in a single virtual machine. So, you know, they call these monster virtual machines. I don't know, I honestly, I don't know anyone who has really had the need to create a virtual machine that large. Uh, perhaps there are some very large companies out there that, that need that. But it is a, a great statement on the scalability of, you know, VMware vSphere. So that's the new virtual machine hardware version. It also supports the latest guest operating systems, Windows 8 and Windows Server 2012, those being the primary, you know, changes to that guest OS list, the latest Intel and AMD CPUs in the physical servers. And one of the cool things, I think, is once you upgrade to virtual machine hardware version 9 and install the new VMware tools, of course, that will require a guest OS reboot, but once you do that, VMware says that in future versions of the virtual machine hardware and the virtual machine tools, you won't have to reboot your virtual machines uh, when those installations need to be done uh, any longer in the future. So I think that's a great improvement. There's also some access to low-level you know, CPU counters from inside the guest OS. Something else they've changed is virtual machine compatibility. And to me, this is almost just a naming change, really. So in the past, they would call this, uh, or the virtual machines would have virtual machine hardware version, you know, 5, uh, 8, and 9, let's say. And now this is called virtual machine compatibility. So when you go to create a new virtual machine, as you see in the graphic there, it's going to ask you what version of ESX do you want this virtual machine to be compatible with. So it's really just a different way of saying, you know, what virtual machine hardware do you want to use, but instead they're saying, what ESX hypervisor do you want this virtual machine to be compatible with? So virtual machine hardware 9 would be compatible with ESX 5.1. Now, this is only a change in the web user interface. Something else I forgot to mention about the vSphere web client is that they're saying all the new features of vSphere will be found in the web client. Many of those won't be found. They won't even be available in the old Windows-based client, and that's even true with vSphere 5.1. For example, vSphere replication, when you administer that um, inside a virtual or on a virtual machine, um, things like that, you know, may only be found in the web client. I mentioned earlier vSphere data protection. So VMware has replaced their backup application, previously called VDR or VMware Data Recovery, with an all-new backup application called vSphere Data Protection, or VDP. So there's no more VDR, there's only VDP, but VDP is a significant improvement. And um, this is actually included with vSphere 5.1 Essentials Plus and above. So really the only version of vSphere that doesn't have VDP available is vSphere 5.1 Essentials only. So VDP um, does offer things like deduplication, uh, it does apply or does deploy as a virtual appliance. It's got a very simple configuration. A simple, uh, it, it's completely agentless, so it uses VADP. It uses uh, change block tracking, and um, the file level restore is still available. But now you've got email reporting. Now the downside, though, is that the virtual machine backup data is only stored inside the VDP virtual appliance, and uh, unfortunately, they actually removed the ability to store it in a uh, Windows-based, you know, SIFS file share, which to me made it easier to get off-site or to back it up with another, let's say, physical server, traditional backup application and put it on tape. That functionality is no longer there. Now the backup data is only stored inside the VDP virtual appliance. So, you know, that's a downside. Um, a number of people have asked if this is based on the virtual appliance edition of EMC Avamar. 
VMware says no, but they did collaborate with the EMC Avamar team to make VDP. So here's the limitations you need to know about, um, and they're very similar to those that were in VDR. They are that you can only have up to 100 virtual machines per VDP appliance, so that really limits you to a small virtual infrastructure. Now you can have up to 10 VDP appliances, so in theory you could have 10 times 100 or 1,000 virtual machines being backed up on a single vCenter server with 10 VDP appliances. However, you've got 10 different points of management, 10 different points of you know, administration for backups. So to me, that's really not an ideal solution. So I would recommend only using VDP if you know you're going to have a small infrastructure. You know, Maybe it's a remote location. They've just got, let's say, two servers, and you know they're never going to grow beyond you know, say 25 virtual machines or something, um, and VDP is you know included with vSphere, so it may be a good option for that. But for a large enterprise that's growing, I wouldn't recommend VDP simply because the the virtual machine you know limitation, the uh, two terabyte of deduplicated data uh, limitation. So you can only store up to two terabytes of virtual machine backups in the data store. Uh, no option to store the virtual machines really anywhere but inside the appliance and no option to get the virtual machines off-site. Uh, if you have a growing infrastructure, I would recommend you know considering a third-party backup application, say like a, a Veeam backup uh, or similar, even Veeam backup. Uh, they have said you know in, uh, in an upcoming version they'll be announcing tape support to help you get that data off-site. They also have replication, so they can replicate a virtual machine off-site. So that's VMware data recovery. Let's move on and talk about another new feature in vSphere 5.1, which is vCenter Operations Manager. And this is the foundation edition. So vCenter Operations Manager in itself isn't completely new. You know, vCenter Ops, or, or vCops, as people affectionately call it, is uh, VMware's capacity and performance management tool for the virtual infrastructure. It's a great tool, and it's very competitive with you know, other solutions available from companies like Veeam or vKernel uh, or even, you know, let's say VM Turbo, there's a lot of different solutions out there. It's a great tool, but what they've done in the latest version of vSphere is they've included a completely free version called Foundations, Foundation Edition with the vSphere 5.1 suite. So here's what vCenter Operations Manager looks like. It's got some real nice um, badges, they call them, these scores that are used to very quickly identify the status of, of something. So the health of your infrastructure, the risk in your infrastructure, the efficiency of your infrastructure to help you identify waste or to help you identify potential bottlenecks. Uh, it also, uh, the scores also identify workload, you know, time remaining before you run out of resources and so forth. You can administer vCenter Operations Manager completely from uh, the same interface as the vSphere web client. Uh, there is a separate site you can go to, but you're also going to see information about uh, your virtual machines in the vSphere web client. And uh, again, it's a great tool. I'm not going to go into you know extensive detail about it, but what they've done is this new Foundations Edition is included with every version of, of the VMware vSphere suite, starting with uh, Essentials. So really, every edition of vSphere. So unlike VDP, it starts with Essentials Plus and above. vCenter Operations Manager Foundation is included with every version of vSphere. So it deploys as actually a vApp with two different virtual appliances inside. And the limitation that you need to know about with the Foundations Edition is that it only covers performance monitoring. It doesn't do capacity planning or some of the more advanced features uh, that the various commercial editions of vCenter Operations Manager do. So there's no capacity analysis, but still, it's a very nice performance tool, so much better than you would get just with the you know basic charts and graphs that you see inside vCenter. So vCenter Operations Manager Foundation, I would install it even if I had a third-party tool just to you know do double monitoring and compare over time the different statistics and you know who knows, maybe one day you want to move to the uh, commercial edition of vCenter Operations Manager. Moving on, the vSphere Distributed Switch, or VDS. 
There's a lot of new features in the vSphere distributed switch. Starting off with the network health check. Uh, the network health check will actually go in and tell you uh, if you have things properly configured on the on the vSphere distributed switch itself. So you know one of the common you know issues that you can you can have with a vSphere distributed switch is uh, disconnecting you know let's say all the uplinks from the switch accidentally and then uh, and even disconnecting you know the management port for the ESXi host from the switch and then you lose you know connectivity and so you've got this network health check new in this in the distributed switch with 5.1 that can help you identify some of these types of problems you know before they happen you can also back up and restore your vSphere distributed switch configuration so that's a great feature in itself um, the management network rollback and recovery can can fix uh, problems uh, if your if your management network gets disconnected uh, from the the physical network, the vSphere distributed switch can actually detect that and and automatically recover it for you. So that's smart. The distributed port auto expand. So if you run out of uh, ports, uh, it can actually autom automatically add more uh, virtual distributed switch uh, connect connectivity ports. Uh, MAC address management, link ag aggregation control protocol, or LACP, which is for you know bonding uplinks to the physical network. All this is in included. The um, the scalability has been improved in the new vSphere switch 5.1. So as you can see, the number of VDSs per vCenter server uh, has been tremendously increased from 32 to 128 number of static port groups. I won't go into all these statistics here, but you can see that the scalability has been vastly improved over the VCR distributed switch in 5.0. There's a new bridge protocol data unit filter, so it can essentially filter out BPDUs that are coming from the physical network to prevent problems. There's a new version of NetFlow, SNMP enhancements, single root IO virtualization, or SRIOV. This was something that Windows Server 2012 Hyper-V you know, first came out with. And a number of people were bashing uh, VMware because they didn't have SRIOV. Well, now they have SRIOV. If you're not familiar with it, this is really for um, network applications that are extremely demanding, require you know the highest available uh, network performance. So you can actually connect the virtual machine directly to a physical NIC and directly to the network without going really through the virtualization layer. So uh, it's it's uh, really just for the applications that need that type of thing, but it's great to know that it's there. You know, if you if you need it, port monitoring, R span and ER span. These are standard uh, network monitoring tools uh, that you would use to monitor like VLAN trunks or individual you know switch ports. Uh, now the virtual distributed switch is compatible with those standard uh, monitoring tools that you would use, for example, to send all of the traffic um, on a particular vSphere distributed switch to let's say a uh, network general sniffer that's connected over on the physical network to uh, a, a different switch so you could use these uh, port mirroring um, protocols or standards to get that uh, that visibility into the vSphere uh, virtual network Moving on from the vSphere distributed switch to vMotion enhancements. You know, really the biggest vMotion enhancement uh, is, or the most talked about vMotion enhancement, is the uh, requirement for shared storage with vMotion is now gone in vSphere 5.1. And this is also something that Windows the Server, you know, Hyper-V first came out with. They call it uh, shared nothing live migration. Well, in vSphere 5.1, now you've got the same thing where they're essentially combining a vMotion and a storage vMotion in a single step. So first they, they vMotion the virtual machine from one host to another and then they storage vMotion the virtual machine disk files from let's say the local storage on one host to the local storage on another host. So it's kind of VMware's way of saying oh yeah you know we can do that too um, and they call it they they just call it you know vMotion no longer requires shared storage. Microsoft calls it shared nothing live migration. Anyway, same same thing. Uh, that's the major enhancement to vMotion. I'm sure there are other you know more uh, minor enhancements. But 
I want to stick to the major stuff, you know, in this webinar. So let's move on. Let's talk about vSphere replication. Uh, vSphere replication actually came out with vSphere 5, but it's been significantly enhanced with vSphere 5.1, uh, even uh, you know similarly to the vSphere web client. Uh, so there's major enhancements in here, and with vSphere replication, this is a, a built-in replication solution. So what it is is it's a virtual appliance that you deploy on an ESXi host, and you've got a primary site with at least one ESXi host and a secondary site with at least one ESXi host. They're both running the vSphere replication virtual appliance and then what you're able to do inside let's say the vSphere web client is go in and configure virtual machine replication from one site to the other site. So this is done on a per virtual machine basis. There is a way to select virtual machines really in mass and it allows you to move the virtual machines um, or actually move the changes to the virtual to the virtual machines from you know one site to the other. Now this could be done in a local area network in the single in a single data center if you chose to do it that way. But it's really designed with you know wide area replication in mind. Now it doesn't replace Site Recovery Manager. In fact, Site Recovery Manager can work with vSphere replication. VMware Site Recovery Manager or SRM is a I'll call it a full scale disaster recovery um, planning and uh, recovery solution. So you know with SRM for vSphere you can say okay I want to recover all these virtual machines, I want to prioritize the recovery of these virtual machines, I want to test the recovery of these virtual machines and then you can actually initiate the recovery or it will it could um, conceivably automatically initiate it for you but you really don't want to do that. You want to be able to manually initiate it and SRM uses traditionally um, hardware-based replication, but now it can also use VMware's uh, vSphere replication or a software-based replication solution as well. So vSphere replication is a great built-in feature available with all versions of vSphere except Essentials. And you know, again, this is one of the features that uh, Windows Server 2012 uh, Hyper-V has been touting their replica being built in, well, vSphere replication is is a complementary, you know, similar feature. How or what it benefits you, uh, how it benefits you, I should say, excuse me, is low cost replication. So you don't have to buy some expensive hardware based, you know, replication solution in your storage area network and have two identical storage area networks, one at each site. With vSphere replication, replication can finally be affordable you know, for the small and medium-sized business. It's easy to set up using vCenter. It can integrate with SRM. It works with dissimilar servers and dissimilar storage. So on the uh, primary site, I could have an HP server with some HP storage, and it could be fiber channel. And on the secondary side, I could have a Dell server with some SATA storage. And I can still use vSphere replication to replicate virtual machines from one site to the other. It also integrates uh, Microsoft uh, VSS or Volume Shadow Services to quiesce the applications and the operating system files um, on the virtual machines before they are replicated and you know using snapshot technology and VADP the virtual machines um, you know the applications will suffer just a tiny bit you know maybe a few milliseconds or something uh, maybe a second or so of downtime uh, as the changes of that virtual machine are preserved before they're replicated. So it's a great uh, disaster recovery replication solution included with vSphere and greatly improved with vSphere 5.1. Now let's move on. Let's talk about vCSA. I mentioned it you know, earlier. It's the Linux-based virtual appliance edition of VMware vCenter. And VMware has said at some point they plan to go just to vCSA and not have a Windows installation. It does make deployment and configuration and installation of vCenter very easy because you just download a virtual appliance and deploy the OVF to an ESXi server. And after a few clicks, you've got, an, you've got a fully functioning vCenter server. So again, vCSA is the vCenter server appliance. Uh, there's no Windows OS 
license to buy because it's based on Linux. No Windows OS installation to be done. No Windows upgrades. Uh, you don't have to install, you know, SQL Server, let's say Express, on on small installations. Or um, you actually do if you had a large uh, vSphere virtual infrastructure. Uh, really, the limitation on the database is going to be the same. So uh, if you have the Windows-based edition of vCenter, uh, you know, you're going to have to connect it to an external Microsoft SQL Server with VMware vCenter Server Appliance. You're going to have to connect it to, I believe it just supports Oracle at this point, but I'm sure Microsoft SQL Server is coming. But, you know, it, once you grow beyond so many virtual machines, you're going to have to connect it to that external database server. But with small virtual infrastructures, it works with a fully self-contained database. VMware says it's more secure, of course, because it's based on Linux. The web client server piece is already installed, and they're saying that this is the future of the vCenter server. Now, let's talk about the vSphere 5.1 single sign-on, or SSO. This is a major change with vSphere 5.1 that you need to know about. What this is, is a critical new piece of the vSphere 5.1 infrastructure. It's called single sign-on, or SSO. So SSO serves as the authentication broker and security token exchange. So no longer is Windows Active Directory, or does it have to be the security domain, for authentication to the virtual infrastructure. Single sign-on provides your virtual infrastructure really its own security domain. So once you're authenticated with SSO, you get a security token and you can authenticate with multiple vSphere components. So all the different vSphere components are compatible with single sign-on. So you authenticate once to the SSO server and the SSO server could use your Active Directory credentials as well. Those aren't totally out of the picture but the important thing is that it can stand on its own and it is its own uh, security domain. Once you've got that token, you can work with multiple uh, VMware products and you know, you're authenticated. So the downside to it is, is it does complicate things a bit if you aren't familiar with you know, how it works. So this is a nice diagram from VMware.com. On the left you see you log into the web client you are issued a token based on your username and password from the vCenter single sign-on database which is installed by default if you install the vCenter server appliance. If you install vCenter server for Windows you're going to have to install the single sign-on um, piece additionally just like the vSphere web client server. Back to the diagram, you're authenticated most likely to Active Directory could be open LDAP. From there the token is passed back to the web client, then you can use that token to talk to vCenter servers, multiple vCenter servers, vCenter server orchestrator, vShield, and you know a number of other uh, VMware solutions. When it comes to installation, as I already talked about, it's included with the vCenter server appliance. You have to install it separately with the vCenter server for Windows. So the single server use cases are, are very simple for installation, but once you get into multi-site deployments and there are high availability scenarios, uh, you've got a lot more complexities involved, uh, much more than I'm going to get into in this webinar, but there is a great VMware knowledge base article there uh, for more information on single sign-on, multi-site deployment, high availability, high availability, and so forth. Now don't be you know, scared of single sign-on. If you install VCSA, you don't even have to really worry about it or think about it. If you go to the administrative console for VCSA, you'll see that yes, single sign-on is running, and you know that's really all you have to think about in a in a small virtual infrastructure. Single sign-on can affect upgrades because it's new. It wasn't there in vSphere 5, so it has to be added when you upgrade to vSphere 5.1. SSO is required. You can't just say, no, I'm not going to use SSO. If you're using vSphere 5.1, you have to use SSO. And uh, it's just something to include in your list of things to upgrade or, in this case, really install when you go through the vSphere 5.1 you know, upgrade process. Something else that's new, along with vSphere 5.1, is the vSphere Multi-Hypervisor Manager, or MHM. MHM is a 
free tool, I guess, really. It's, it, it was previously called uh, vCenter XVP Manager, and it was actually a VMware fling over at labs.vmware.com. Now it's become an official product, VMware MHM, and a lot of people haven't, thir haven't heard about it because, you know, VMware really doesn't talk about it. But uh, it's on the same page when you go to download VMware vCenter. It's right there on that list, the multi-hypervisor manager. So what it does is it allows you to manage Hyper-V servers from VMware vCenter. So you've got a, an extension that you add into vCenter server, and at this point it only supports vCenter server for Windows. There's also a vSphere client plugin, which again only supports the vSphere for Windows uh, client. So I know I talked a lot about why you should use the web client, but if you want to use MHM, you're going to have to use the Windows uh, vCenter server and the Windows vSphere client. Anyway, vSphere uh, multi-hypervisor manager allows you to manage Hyper-V hosts. Now, they're not going to be in the same host and clusters tree on the left-hand side, uh, but they are in a separate uh, icon that you can go in and you can manage Hyper-V hosts, virtual machines, you can access the consoles, you can power on the virtual machines, power them off, you can even create new virtual machines, create new virtual networks, yes, over in Hyper-V. VMware has said that uh, they will be expanding to other hypervisors, for example, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, perhaps Zen Server, perhaps they haven't said. But um, make sure if you want to manage Windows Server 2012 Hyper-V that you get the new beta edition that's out there. Uh, those are all the different things you can do with it on the screen there. I'm not going to go you know, into it. But, um, of course, the main thing that VMware really wants you to do is to migrate your virtual machines from Hyper-V into vSphere. Uh, I'm sure they, they do have, uh, you know, that, that wish in mind for this product, uh, but I, I would say it is still very useful, even if you don't plan to do that. If you plan to have, have two separate virtual infrastructures, I think it's great for the VMware admin to be able to see the virtual machines that are running over in Hyper-V infrastructure and have basic administrative, you know, control over those virtual machines. So still, it's a very valuable solution, even if you plan to have, you know, two separate virtual infrastructures. Again, you can access the Hyper-V virtual machine consoles. You can run vCenter reports um, on those uh, Hyper-V virtual machines. You can, uh, there, there is, you know, plan support for other hypervisors, but again, there's no vSphere web client integration at this time. And make sure you, you get the beta for all the latest features out there. Now, if for more information on vSphere 5.1's really long list of new features, there's many more than what I've covered here. If you go out to Google, and uh, I hate to just direct people to Google, but these are some massive documents. These are the official VMware documents uh, that have you know all the very fine details on every one of the new features in VMware vSphere. So if you Google vSphere new features 5.1 and then do site colon vmware.com, you'll see these PDFs. And there's PDFs on the vSphere 5.1 platform, storage, networking, VMware, vCenter, and a number of others that didn't fit on the page there. And those are the official PDFs. So, you know, for any of you who have very technical questions on, on the speeds and feeds, those are the PDFs that I'm going to refer you to. Now, if you'd like more, much more hands-on uh, experience with vSphere 5.1, how to configure all of these new features, um, how to deploy the vCenter server appliance, the, how to use the web client you know, in detail, vSphere replication, VMware data recovery, um, all of these new features that I've covered, uh, they're in my new vSphere 5.1 new uh, video training course over at trainsignal.com. There is a free three-day you know, time frame. You can use this course uh, at, at no cost. And it's only a five-hour course, so I'd be willing to bet you could probably watch it in that time. I don't encourage people, you know, to, to use it for three days and then cancel because we've got so many other great courses out there. Uh, most of them, or, you know, all the new ones that I'm working with are related to VMware, vSphere, and I've got a lot of other, you know, really excellent authors helping me out. There's information on the training. And, you know, what we covered here is uh, just some of the many new features in vSphere 5.1. As a little graphic icon there says from VMware, whoops, go back. Um, VMware says that this is a major uh, 
you know, it's a minor upgrade with major new features, and I think that's really true. VMware has done an amazing job of releasing so many new features in vSphere 5.1. You know, usually when you see a point one upgrade, it's really just to fix bug fixes, right? Like Microsoft's, you know, update one uh, for Windows Server. Well, vSphere 5.1 is not just to fix bug fixes. It's uh, a ton of major new uh, enhancements to the product. So I encourage you to check it out. Of course, you can always download VMware vSphere for uh, 60 days. It's a full 60-day unlimited evaluation of the highest edition of VMware vSphere, which is Enterprise Plus. It includes vCenter. You can even use you know, vCloud Director, uh, vShield, which is now called vCloud Networking and Security. You can use replication, vSphere Data Protection, uh, Site Recovery Manager even is available as an evaluation. So I encourage you to check it out.